This is Twit. Waymo has spent a lot of time and a lot of money developing its self-driving car technology. In particular, its many flavors of LiDAR. That's laser technology that's used to beam out pulses of laser light to determine where and how far away objects are that are surrounding the vehicle. And Waymo has been pretty tight-lipped as to how its in-house technology works. They're all kind of holding it to the vest, you know, close to the vest right now. But now it appears that they're ready to open things up just a little bit for a fee, of course. Sam Abuel Sumid wrote about the Waymo announcement for Forbes and joins us to talk about it. Welcome back, Sam. Hey, Jason and Megan. Good to talk to you again. It's great to have you back. So tell us a little bit about this delicious laser bear honeycomb uh, <laughs> that they, they call it, the LiDAR sensors that Waymo is making available to it its partners. They've definitely got somebody working on the naming side for the product. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we found out uh, about a little more than two years ago uh, when Waymo first introduced the uh, the Chrysler Pacifica minivans that they're now using that um, they they had actually switched from using off-the-shelf sensor components uh, from companies like Velodyne for their LiDAR and, and various other companies for their cameras and radar to developing all their own stuff in-house and making their own sensors. And that includes the LiDAR. And, and you know, one of the, the reasons they did that was to both to improve the performance compared to what was available at the time off the shelf and also to drive down the cost. Because, the you know, if you remember the, the early uh, Google self-driving cars, they had those big spinning uh, Velodyne LiDAR sensors on the roof. Those cost about $80,000 a piece. Wow. And, you know, they reduced the cost by about 90%. And they developed three kinds of LiDAR, a long range, which is the one on the roof, uh, some medium range sensors, and these short range sensors, which you can see them on the cars. Uh, they're, uh, one, there's one on the grill, one on each front fender, and then one on the back that detect what's in close around the car, uh, like pedestrians and, and other vehicles and cyclists and things like that. And they've been, as you said, they've been very secretive about this stuff. They haven't talked about any of the details around the technology, what they're doing differently. Um, but now for, for the first time, they have said that they're gonna offer this short range sensor, the, the one you see in the picture there, uh, which they're calling the laser bear honeycomb. Uh, and uh, they're gonna offer that to other companies that wanna use it for a variety of applications, as long as they're not building autonomous vehicles. Um, so for things like robotics, uh, you know, examples, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's that security robot that you guys had on, uh, on screensavers back last year, uh, you know, things like that and, and various other kinds of applications where, uh, LIDAR can be very useful. Uh, we don't know the total, the exact specs of this thing. It's probably got a range of about, uh, you know, somewhere in the 20 to 30 foot range, uh, maybe a little more than that. Uh, and we don't know what it's going to cost, but if you're working on things that aren't autonomous vehicles, you can now uh, reach out to, there's a, a form on Waymo's website that you can fill out to get more information and, and potentially get your hands on some of these sensors. So I know you said that we, we don't know the cost, but are we talking like $500 or $50,000? Like, <laughs> uh, no, well, yeah, I mean, when, when they originally introduced their, their, announced that they were doing their own sensors, you know, they talked about a 90% cost reduction. Uh, which you know from eighty uh, from eighty thousand dollars sensors available at the time would put you in about the eight thousand dollar range. My guess is now with these short range sensors, at least we're probably talking in the in the one to two thousand dollar range uh, for you know for for you know any kind of significant volumes and and maybe even less than that. Megan might even have twenty dollars to invest <laughs> yeah, in a honeycomb <laughs> lidar $20. sensor. I think. You know, I, I'm sure you could get uh, Leo to put one of these on his uh, Amex card. Yeah. So, but right. they, they are selling it to companies, though, because I went and I tried, I tried yeah. to buy one. And it's like, what's your company? What are you going to do right. with it? Tell us what, yeah, yeah, what they, are you going to do. That's exactly it. They want to know what you're going to do with it because, you know, they don't want to sell them to competitors. Um, you know, because, you know, this, this is, they clearly see this as a competitive advantage for their uh, autonomous, ve autonomous vehicles. Um, but, you know, if you're working on other kinds of projects, you, you do have the opportunity to get these now. Yeah, robotics seems like an obvious fit. What about the software to go along with it? Like, is that is this kind of a standard thing? Like, I'm sure Waymo has developed along with its proprietary hardware software, you know, for it to tie into um, people building you know, robots that might want to to take advantage of this technology. 
like, is there any indication as far as how easy it's going to be for them when they bring this hardware in to, to plug that into the system that they have or is Waymo I, providing that? Yeah. I, I expect that Waymo will probably provide, you know, some basic software drivers, you know, mm -hmm. in order to interface with the hardware. Um, but I, they haven't said whether they're going to provide any of the, um, you know, any of the, the signal processing, um, the software that's required, you know, to, to understand what, what's going on in there, you know, any kind of, you know, neural networks or, or other AI software. Um, but there, there's a lot of open source, uh, AI software out there now that's, that's available. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people working on this kind of stuff, so it, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, you know, once you've got the hardware and got it integrated into whatever project you're doing to get something up and running, um, without, too much difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I read through all of the Waymo's uh, description of this and all of their marketing material, and it appears to me like they're sort of trying to distance themselves from Google. Like you don't see anything about Google or them being part of Google or Alphabet. Um, no. do, is that accurate? Do you think they are trying to to not be associated with the Alphabet name? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that applies to most of the uh, most of the alphabet companies, you know, that aren't Google is, you know, they've always tried to, you know, be standalone businesses. And, you know, I think that over the long haul, you know, what we're, you know, what Waymo and Verily and all the other alphabet companies, you know, they're probably looking, alphabet's probably looking at the potential for, you know, maybe spinning them off or doing an IPO. Uh, you know, in order to capture some of the, the potential value of these companies. So, you know, ever, ever since they announced the, the, the Waymo branding uh, about a little more than two years ago, um, you know, that's that's kind of been the approach they've taken is to, to really focus on the Waymo name rather than the Google name. So they've released one of their LiDAR systems. That means two to go. Uh, mm -hmm. when, <laughs> when will those be for sale? Or do you think that'll ever happen? I mean, Waymo probably I, has to keep I, some of their cards... Yeah, I mean, at, at, at some point, I think, you know, at least the medium range sensor, um, they, they might uh, start to offer that one. You know, there's probably some applications uh, where that one could be useful. I suspect the, the long range sensor is the one that they'll probably want to keep uh, internally the longest, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because based on what we've heard from Waymo, uh, you know, one of the, the things that they've claimed is that, you know, they have the capability to operate their vehicles at higher speeds, at highway speeds, um, you know, with, with the LiDAR. And most of the, the long-range LiDAR that's out there in the market today, available from a variety of companies, you know, is good for about a you know, maximum range of about 200 to 250 meters, so about 600 to 700, 750 feet, uh, roughly, which, you know, at highway speeds at 60, 70 miles an hour, um, that's not very far. You know, I mean, you cover that distance pretty quickly. Yeah. And, you know, so you need some pretty long-range sensors to – to be able to operate at higher speeds. That's why most of the automated vehicles that are out there today, you know, have focused on low speed applications just because of the, the range of the sensors is, is limited. Uh, so I think that uh, the, the long range sensor, the one that you see on the roof is the one that they'll probably hold on to the longest, um, at least until there's some other competition out there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Why do you think uh, Waymo's doing this now? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, self-driving vehicles, it's a slow rollout at this point. And we know that, that Google or Alphabet companies, at, you know, are now at a, at a point where the company really wants them to prove that they are economically viable as, as quickly as possible. Is that why they're doing this now? Does that say anything about the viability of their, like their automated taxi service and when we might see that? Yeah, I, th I think that's part of it. You know, I think, you know, uh, in general, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen Alphabet uh, kind of rein in a lot of their their moonshot companies uh, like Waymo and Verily and, and some of the other, you know, X Labs um, uh, projects, um, you know, trying to get move them towards being revenue generating and and potentially eventually profitable. Um, and, you know, so Waymo, you know, started charging for rides with their Waymo One service in Arizona in December. Um, and, you know, that's still a very limited rollout. Uh, you know, with with something like this, you know, they probably see the potential uh, both to generate some more revenue and also to, you know, to get some scale. I mean, you know, with, with hardware like this, um, you know, the, the you know, there's a lot of engineering costs associated with it. And to, to try to recover some of those costs, you know, the more you can scale up production and get more volume out of it, then 
uh, you know, you can you can get those economies of scale and and drive down the cost even more. Mm -hmm. So that will help the Waymo business, uh, both in terms of reducing, hopefully driving down the cost of the sensors and also, you know, generating some direct revenue from that. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing that they may be looking for is more feedback and other applications, you know, that could potentially, you know, feed, you know, roll back into the development process and make the sensors better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool stuff, Sam Boel Samid, uh, of course, Navigant Research, also one of the hosts of the Wheel Bearings podcast. Where can people find your podcast? You can find that at wheelbearings.media. And uh, this week we have episode 100 coming nice. out. So we're into the triple digits. I love a nice round number. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Sam, you. it's always great to get you on. Thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate great it. Great to talk to you guys, too. All right. Have Take a great care. day. See you later. Bye.